Howdy, folks. Turn the sound a bit. How are you? How's the sound? How's the lighting? Plus, as always, what have you been up to do? What have you been up to today? I don't think I can ever say that sentence right in these streams. Because uh, today, I went to the museum and park with my best friend Miranda and her daughter Evie. We had a very, very fun time. We explored the museum and we tried to period costumes on and... Uh, yeah, a lot of fun, uh, and we went to the duck pond, um, climbed trees, it was a very fun day, it was great to get out of the house for once. Uh, da -da -da. So what's chat saying? Hello Soda, Evan asks everyone's favourite movie from the 90s, for me that's that's obvious, <laughs> you all know what it is. Uh, Listy, ah, 90s trailers, it feels like the second half of the decade used the Dragonheart theme for every trailer. But I looked it up, and apparently it was only about five films that did that. Which is still notable. <laughs> the, the fact that, like, a studio is for, oh, this trailer, so, this music is so good, we'll keep using it. I've noticed um, the Beetlejuice theme gets used for a lot of trailers. Even into the 90s. Uh, Curse says they're going to get a punch of nostalgia from this. I'm, I hope so. That'd be great. Ah, uh, la, 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 la. So, oh, hello, Zelda. Uh, so does this and the 90s when Transformers fans were raging about them turning into animals. That upset them? That Beast Wars was my first Transformers show. I think it was the only Transformers I show, show I saw. Uh, but, but Evan says, Yesterday I just saw For a Love and Thunder in theatres and I'm working on a comparison video to Ragnarok for my YouTube channel. Good luck with that. Does sound very interesting. Uh... Soda, if Spider-Man was in the 90s, I'd say that would be my favourite 90s film. That would be interesting. A 90s, a 90s Spider-Man movie. Though, to be fair, I feel like Sam Raimi's Spider-Man has, like, that 90s energy going for him. Uh, Zelda, my mum was a teenager in the 90s. So, she'd be, like, a slight generation older than me, I think. It is uh, cursed. I'm going to just had some pizza with my brother, dad, and my two nephews. Oh, that sounds lovely. Uh, soda, my day has only been half a day. I only woke up at one in the afternoon. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that, that lion. Sounds like a nice lion. Uh, Kirst, I know... Right, the Casper trailer was the most memorable use of the Beetlejuice theme. 
did it use it? I, I don't remember. I don't rem I don't think I even remember the Casper trailer. I remember the Casper movie and I had it on VHS, but I don't remember the trailer. But I can imagine Beetlejuice fitting it. Uh, so I think Beast Wars was looked down upon by older fans. Eh, I can probably kind of see that at the same time I can't because, again, I didn't really grow up with Generation 1 uh, Transformers. I was a Beast Wars kid. So yeah, we're going to be looking at 24 different um, film trailers from the 90s for this stream. It was a bit... The, the poll for this week was a tie between uh, top five Disney animated couples and uh, 90s movie trailers. And while I know that a lot of people would have liked the couples video, that was a bit too much prep considering that I, I've, I've been out all day and I'm a bit tired. So I thought, you know what, slap some trailers together and we'll watch them. <laughs> Uh, I make some very interesting noises when I'm looking at chat, don't I? Uh, listen, my brain refuses to remember the Beetlejuice theme. All my brain will allow is Gremlins. I only just watch Beetlejuice too. It's hard to explain the Beetlejuice theme because it's so quirky and weird. Uh, Leo, hi Jam. I'm actually feeling nostalgic now. I'm watching uh, B-Mask's two-hour video on Don Bluth musicals, just further flaming my reasons why Anastasia is my favorite movie. Awesome. Uh, Evan, just a quick question. Which of the three, four movies is your favorite and why? Uh, I don't know. Because, like, I'd say I really I really enjoy four as, as, as a film. But the third one I find I find the most fun. So it's really, it's really, really hard. It's very, I can't, I don't think I can even decide. Uh, Zelda, I can't choose my favorite because I love them. Soda, uh, I grew up on G Generation 1, mainly the movie. Uh, Late Fall Girl, I thought it was DreamWorks couples. No, it was Disney couples. It was gonna be Disney couples. Uh, and I do have a list, uh, but I'm probably gonna do it as an actual video, I've decided, because there's just too much prep involved. There's a lot of like planning and research involved. I, I feel like I, I need to like rewatch uh, the romantic scenes in the films that f from the couples, couples I've chosen um, to kind of like really reflect my feelings on those couples. But yeah, I, I will definitely do it eventually. Uh, I'm quite pleased with my, my choice of the couples. Uh, Evan asked what I'm currently working on. Uh, Film Chums podcast on the Star Wars prequels, which I know I was I was trying to get up I think I was trying to get that up by May, but like, uh, it's one of the longer podcasts. It's taken a bit of a while to cut down. Plus, it didn't help that the weather's been awful. Uh, Zelda, I would say Beauty and the Beast is my favorite. Favorite? You mean a favorite '90s movie? Okay, what time are we on? Again, okay, in a few minutes or so, we will we'll start going through all the trailers. It's kind of. Obviously, I'm not going to be looking at every single trailer made of the films of every. Scratch that. Obviously, I'm not going to be uh, looking at every single trailer that came out in the '90s. Uh, there's going to be 24, 24 films. All comes down to about 45 minutes of footage. Yes, there's a lot of trailers to get through. Uh, I tried to find a mix of like animated and live action, uh, weird and normal, bad and good, just just all sorts of different kinds of trailers. Uh, I really want people to have like this feeling of like, oh, which trailer's next? So like, yeah, I, I tried to have a bit of a mix, bit of a mix with it. Um, yeah, and I've not watched a lot of these trailers in a long, long time, so it'll be interesting to see what I even think of them. Oh, <laughs> uh, boom, boom, boom. Evan says, "Is it two hours or more?" No, it's uh, the the Film Tom's podcast on Star Wars prequels has come down to an hour and a half. Um, but the original, the original recording, I think, was maybe two and a half hours or something like that. I can't remember. There was a lot of footage to cut. It, it was the most recording me and Viva have ever done, probably. We were, we were talking about the trilogy for so long. Uh, Listy, I remember getting the chills when I first saw the Lion King's trailer. Still masterful. I was about four when the trailer came out, so I don't remember how I felt. <laughs> I can't think. I can't think of a trailer that I got really emotional about. As a kid, especially as a kid. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe like the Pokemon Digimon movies. I remember getting very emotional about those, but everything else is like, oh, cool. <laughs> so Zelda says they relate to Belle as they're a weird bookworm. Belle's a good, good, uh, good role model for you. She's very lovely. All right. 
No, I don't know what that sound was. Uh, so I'm going to be playing all... I know this is going to sound weird, but I'm playing the trailers from my editing software, Premiere Pro, because there's just so many trailers. <laughs> I don't have time to encode them all, so, like, uh, they're all going to be, like, screened. For... And plus, it's easier for me to kind of, like, skim through them when I'm on my editing software. Uh, so, like, if I want to go back a bit, if I want to freeze frame or something, I feel like it's going to be a lot easier to kind of track through my Premiere. Um, Evan says, I was born in 2003, so I have no nostalgia of 90s trailers. This will be interesting for you, then. This uh, we, You'll get to see uh, you get to see what trailers used to be like. The the kind of trailers that, uh, that millennials grew up with. <laughs> They're very unique. I'd say a lot of 90s trailers, are, they have their own style. And, like, it's a style that's no longer with us anymore, I've noticed. This day must have been 8 or 9. I was just getting into our actual creation side of cartoons so it was really impactful Aww. Billy, hey how may I late? no, uh, I'm just about to start playing the trailers, just about to start playing them uh, let's have a look at the time, yeah I think, it's, I think it's time I think it's time to start looking at the trailers uh, again 24 of them uh, I will be pausing in between the trailers though uh, so that we can have a bit of, if, if people want to say something more then we can say something more uh, this is gonna be a long ass stream because there's so many trailers, uh, but let's uh, let's go for this. So I'm hoping this even works. Let's get the sound on. Here comes one of Disney's goofiest stars in his first full-length animated feature. Hang on. Right. Let me know if. Uh, let me know if the sound is off or I'm off. Like, it, I mean, like, it, uh, is the trailers too quiet? Or am I too quiet? Am I too loud? Just let me know. Uh, so I didn't get to say anything about that. That was just a test. <laughs> now, I never actually grew up with Airbud. I mean, I, I grew up with any of the Airbud. Uh, are the trailers from the UK? They're, they're just from YouTube. I just grabbed them from YouTube. Some of them might be from the UK, some of them might be from the US. You can't hear the trailer very well. Turning them up. Let me know if it's too loud. Not exactly. Hey boy, come again. Come again. Yeah, the reason I turned the, the sound down was because on my on my headphones they were loud, and I was like, oh, oh, is it too loud for them as well? <laughs> yeah, I, I do not remember Airbud. Uh, Airbud wasn't. Airbud was not nostalgic for me, but like I know I know the jokes around it. <laughs> It's a silly premise. It's a very silly premise. Name's Norm Snively. I believe you got my dog. Mm. Uncle Jenna. Love her ninety slapstick going off here. <laughs> I think this is a very new trailer. This doesn't seem like a trailer that came out in the night. It seems like a re-release trailer. So this is the Airbud made them cry when they were five. Oh, bless you. Oh, uh, this is uh, Anaconda. Another, another film I did not grow up with. Again, I wanted the mix. I didn't want it to be all trailers of things I grew up with. This is what I mean. The night is trailer voice. I miss them. <laughs> also, uh, Leo has something to say about... Uh, that's a weird thing to freeze on. About... Well, yeah, Airbud. So Leo says, I remember the Airbud trailer from the opening of the quest for Camelot VHS. I never saw it, though. Later, the only thing that piqued my interest was Michael Jetta was in it. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. Uh, like, let's go, back, let's go back to... Let's go back to Anaconda. No matter what you do. Oh, that is a great voice, isn't it? Oh, and the big, the big text. Love it. Don LaFontaine. Yeah, it's Don LaFontaine. Star Pictures invites you on a journey we, into the we, need a, we need a voice like him fear. for new films. <laughs> oh, so it's Michael Jeter. Ice Cube. <laughs> that's how you know it's 90s. <laughs> oh, that's a cool font transition. Can't tell if the, the anaconda's um, a 
I can't tell if the anaconda actually looks good. I don't know who Bill Woodson is, sorry. Soda. Okay, I love Space Jam. It's so 90s. I love it. Uh, so what's next? Oh, it's ants. Beneath our feet lies another world. That's a good trailer voice. In case you haven't noticed, we ants are running the show. We're the lords of the earth. Liam, even a young, beardless like Danny okay, Trejo is in this film. That, that was real to me. <laughs> Danny Trejo, I remember seeing Bidless and Desperado. Red Pepper. Is this Red Pepper then? It's not, it's not got the same oomph as Don, I'll admit. I'm noticing this trailer's kind of just going through the, the beats of the film. It's going through the beats. But it's got a nice rhythm. I like the rhythm in this trailer. I'm not sure if trailers are even edited like this anymore, where it's kind of like the story, just follow the story. I think some of them are. Uh, Leo says, well, controversial opinion. Uh, Ants is better than Bugs Life. I actually agree, to be honest. <laughs> Billy also says this is better than Bugs Life. So star studded. <laughs> that's when you know that's when you know when Jeffrey Katzenberg was involved. When the cast is like nearly everyone in Hollywood. I can't believe you tried to pass yourself off as a soldier. The trick is not to panic. Evan, if you're referring to Don, I think, yeah, it's the, 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 there's something a bit more grittier about his voice. Lily, uh, Jamie, this is way darker than Bugs Life too. It is much darker. Is the, is the sound between the trailer and me all right? Is it okay? I really don't want to be like one being louder than the other. But if it's one thing that's going to be louder, it should be my voice. Like it's a good voice. I just, I just like Don's more. Like you. Evan, I'm asking you, is Ant better because it's grittier? Mm. I don't think a film is superior to another film because it's darker or because it's grittier. Um, I just remember enjoying this more. That's all. <laughs> Leo, I still can't believe how good Chris Volk was in this film. Yeah, he was really good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had to put this in there. <laughs> this is the way the world could end. Please show some mercy. With ice. Says a book. Says a book's life have that last story cliche. Its story didn't age well. Lissy says ice to see the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, no! <laughs> I love this film so much. <laughs> it's a good trailer. Gotta admit, it's a good trailer. It's got, it's got, again, it's got, it's got a good rhythm to it. It's, it's highlighting, it's highlighting a lot of the, 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 the Mr. Freeze quotes. Yeah, it's, it's doing it. It's doing it. <laughs> Schwarzenegger. It's not like it's misleading people what, what they're gonna be in for. <laughs> George Clooney. I love the marrying kind. I know you've had your wild night. Good night. Wild doesn't doesn't quite cover it. Chris O'Donnell. Come join me. My garden needs tender. She loves me and not you, and it's driving you crazy. Yeah, highlighting all the toys. <laughs> Uma Thurman. So many people to kill. So little time. Evan, I don't mind people making NC jokes. It's fine. I just don't like talking about him. That's all. <laughs> uh, Leo, now I'm curious to see how this trailer looks compared to the Batman Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero trailer. Sub-Zero is probably much better. But considering what... Considering the tone that this film went for, I think this presentation's fine. Like, you... If I saw this trailer as a kid, I'd be like, oh, I know what I'm in for. I know what I'm getting into. Zelda says, yeah, it's honest. It is honest. Like, yeah. It's not trying to say, oh, we're dark, we're gritty. It's like, 
it's, it's what it is. <laughs> What's next? They have come from the cold, far reaches of space. I just can't remember what this is. Oh, it's Cone Heads. Okay, this is a film I've never seen. This was a Dan Aykroyd film based on a uh, Saturday Night Live sketch about aliens with cone heads. They made a whole film about aliens with cone heads. <laughs> I don't know how I'd be able to tolerate this for a whole film. <laughs> That's our lead character. <laughs> I don't know how I'd tolerate him for a whole film. <laughs> Uh, Lisa said, I remember cone heads, of course you do. Everyone says you you all fart. I come from France. It was a chance to settle into the neighborhood, make a home for themselves. No, no, no. Lisa says, I've never seen cone heads either, uh, though I'd hear the word cone head mentioned in everyday speech as an insult. never lost their appetite for life. Chris Farley! Make a sandwich like that. For their passion for each other. Let us suppose for some reason my life function ceased. What would you do? I would incinerate your carcass in the tradition of Obadiah the Umcuse and put it in a clean, dry place. <laughs> Paramount Whoa. Pictures proudly presents... Adam Sandler's a cameo. Right. <laughs> That's heads above the rest. <laughs> Again, I... I don't know if I could. I don't know if I can enjoy these characters for a whole film. <laughs> but I could say that about a lot of Saturday Night Live movies. Uh, so it says the one thing from the nineties I don't miss: the gross out. Yeah, we had a lot of gross out films in the nineties. What's next? What's next? It does look better than it's part, it does. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Billy. Listy, right, I'm going to force you to review this through Patreon. Name the price. What, Coneheads? <laughs> Leah, I'm surprised the woman, women aren't sporting Madonna Comerons. Oh, this is cool as ice. <laughs> the Vanilla Ice movie. So, are we having fun yet or what? But now, this sleepy little town is about to become... <laughs> Perhaps the whitest person in history having his own movie. <laughs> what the hell is that? Drop that zero and get with the hero. You are the girl. See you later, Dick. It's Nick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, own. Sometimes I'd like to do something really wild just because I never have. I remember I've seen reviews of this and most of it is kind of just like a long music video. I want you to Look at that haircut. You think he is. My brother's been kidnapped. What we want, Jim, is a little collection on an old IOU. You're the eye, and with you. You're all wrong. You didn't do anything. Come on, get on. How can you know that, Catherine? I trust him, Dad. <laughs> I love how she's going, I trust him, he just got Vanilla going. <laughs> and chill it to the bone. Well, I hope you like being a biker chick, because you're not going to see me or my car again. Imagine that. It's got a daffy hat. <laughs> Wait, oh god, the only thing I always take away from Cola's eyes is that scene where he drives in front of a woman on a horse. Speak as an ex- Equestrian, I know for a fact that any horsey woman would have absolutely fucking killed him or at least broken many, many bones. Uh, this is Disney, I don't know which one. It's oh, it's Doug's first movie. But now, it's heading your way. There's something bad behind me, isn't there? Disney presents. This is one of my guild pleasure films. I can't help it. I remember. I remember watching this as a kid. I think I, w I watched it for one. Of, from, I think I watched it for one of my first ever dates that I had. Um, but like, it's, this is a film that I do sometimes put on for a cheer up. It's just 
It's kind of chill. Finally discovered the shocking truth about what lives in Lucky Duck Lake. Our people have uh, Billy, back when Disney controlled Doug after Nickelodeon, yeah. Will fall from Leo says, uh, I forgot that Doug had a movie. Now, yep, he had a movie. The answers are revealed. Only in this all new movie so, was there a demand for a Doug movie? I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. The first Doug movie ever. <sighs> Premiering only on video. March 1999. 1999. I would have. March 1999. I would have been about eight. Ooh, we know what this is. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so this is the film that inspired me to become a filmmaker. Yep. Uh, Billy, which version of Doug do you prefer, Disney or Nickelodeon? Nickelodeon, definitely Nickelodeon. I'm as harmless as cherry I do like the Disney version, but Nickelodeon took Those more risks. Hands. Those are your hands. Those are your hands. I think you should just come home with me. Joyce, I just saw this story. Okay, this is. I just realized that I think this is a this is a trailer. This is a theme that got used a lot in other trailers. Leo says, Doug is one of those shows where I wonder, did I know its existence as a kid, or did I only hear Americans well, talk about it for you, right, later? Those things are cool. Can I bring show and tell on Monday? He's a highly uh, Billy, this was a weird movie, and I love Winona Ryder in this. this. Evan, do you think Disney now, ever took risks back in Doug's world. days? Not and that I remember. Uh, Leo, I was a older when I saw it was as a hands, but it just blew me away. Yeah, I really resonated with that. I really, I really connected with that. It's, again, it's the film that made me want to become a director. Like, I've been, I was interested in filmmaking already, but this was the film that was like, I want to make them. I actually want to make them. All along, I felt in my gut there was something wrong with him. From Tim Burton comes the most incredible tale of a most unusual character, Edward Scissorhands. Me. Billy, Andrew Michael Hall is also in this. Yes, he's is. It's the first time he got cast as like a villain. Like before, before this is hands, he was mainly doing like nerd roles. But in this, he was like the bully, which is like a kind of a big deal. They didn't type cast him. Ghost. I remember watching this film with my family. Seems like a. I remember catching on t catching on TV. With my family, I'm just I'm and like just... my family got my family thought it was cheesy, but we all really enjoyed it. <laughs> what do you want? I do, I do miss Patrick Swayze. Somebody, somebody, somebody help us! What's happening? One of the best things about this is like the special effects, like how how well they hold up today. Like for 90 standards, the special effects were pretty good. They got um, they got Mike Jitloff, who is uh, like an independent animator to do a lot of the uh, ghost effects. Molly, what can't you hear? And Vincent Scavelli. You can hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, Leo, I've never seen Ghost. I figured I never would. I thought it would be too sad. It's sad, but also silly. <laughs> It's like a nice mix. Like you make, it'll make you emotional, but you also laugh as well. You laugh quite a lot. This is this, this oh man, this film. Uh, this film destroys me. I put it on on whenever I need a good song. Billy, did you know that Bruce Willis was considered for the lead? And how would you picture him in this? No, no, no. I don't. I can't imagine Bruce in this. I love Bruce, but no. This, I can't. I can't imagine it. I honestly can't. Sam's dead. But maybe because it's like I just always associate Patrick with this film. Sam would never say that. You gotta take all your anger, all your love, all your hate, and then let it Yeah, this is one of the best parts in the film. It's him learning to interact with him as a ghost. You in danger, girl. Oh, and the villain is Tarzan. <laughs> the voice of Dizzy's Tarzan is the villain in this film. That's a pretty cool music. I like this music. Leah, the most sort of it is in that video on Vincent Scavelli. Yeah. 
Listy didn't Whoopi win her first award for this? I think she got nominated for an Oscar. Billy, not just this movie, most associate patch with uh, Roadhouse too. They do, yeah, and uh, Dirty Dancing. But for me, for me, I associate him with uh, Ghost and Donnie Darko. What's this? I actually don't know what this is. Oh, th I think this is Godzilla. The Gods the US Godzilla remake from the 90s. Yeah, you can hear the stomping. <laughs> this is definitely Kaiju. I'm liking the mystery been built up in this trailer. Evan says, asks, 1998 Godzilla Guilty Pleasure of yours? I don't think I've ever finished it. I've not really finished I grew up, it, it's definitely a nostalgic film for me. I loved it when it came out. But like, it's not, whenever I've tried to rewatch it, I just kind of get bored halfway through. <laughs> I like all the celebrity cameos and I like seeing Godzilla and they get bored. <laughs> Misty, is this Matthew, I swear I can remember Broderick's version. This is the Matthew Broderick film. Leo, for as shit as this film was, the trailer was so clever. It's hard to have stuff like this anymore. I can't keep secrets anymore. Yeah, the way that it like hides Godzilla is really... And like it doesn't even put... You'd think like a Roland Emmerich film would put a lot of emphasis on the cast, but it's not. The trailer's not doing that. It's all about... It's all about the intensity and mystery of Godzilla. So it's just when the trailer's better than the film. Oh, oh, that's a weird thing to end on. <laughs> What's next? What we got next? All audiences, so it could be a family film. Touchstone. In a deserted building lives a 5,000 year old genie. Oh, it's Kazam. <laughs> Billy, did you see the animated series that spawned from the Godzilla film? I did, yeah. I watched it every morning. It's Kazam. Max Connor. And together, they're about to fall. Oh, is it Shazam? It's Shazam. <laughs> I can never tell which <laughs> one. Those effects. <laughs> I forgot how scary he was. <laughs> oh, he is really scary. <laughs> Wait, so it is Kazam. It is Kazam, okay. <laughs> I wish I wish that Shaq would just leave. I am, I'm, he's making me very uncomfortable. Leo, the story of a white kid who gets a brown black man to give his every of his whim. Try not to think about it too much. Yeah. I don't know what they were going with for this film. <laughs> yes, I remember Billy, but I don't like I don't like NC and I don't like talking about him. <laughs> I can feel that. I don't like that. <laughs> Here's a tip. This is the funny shoes. I like those shoes. Okay, what's what's next? But I I put so many on here that I can't remember. Oh, it's misery. And Stephen King want to be the first to wish you a merry Christmas and a safe and sane holiday season. I didn't know we went for like a Christmas route with it for the trailer. That's interesting. But for novelist Paul Sheldon, it won't be very merry. 
Adelaide. He's spending Christmas in bed. There is nothing to worry about. He's gonna be just fine. Okay, Kathy's performance in this is amazing. I think one of my clients, Paul Sheldon, might be in some kind of trouble. Yeah, I don't remember Misery being set at Christmas. I think maybe they were trying to like tie into it being released at Christmas, maybe? You won't be going to know. Zelda's reading the book. Ooh. The misery novel. Is the book as good as the film? He won't be seeing any friends. They said he checked out last Tuesday. Leo, uh, me, I wonder if it's a Christmas movie. Jam. Oh, it's misery. <laughs> He won't be spending time with his family. I really hope I never meet a fan like this, by the way. None of you better not be like this. You have only one person to help him through the holidays. R.I.P. James Caan, yeah. One of his best performances. Andy Wilkes. What a poet you are. The presumption must now be that Paul Sheldon is dead. She loves everything he ever wrote. I'd love to stay here and chat, but I'm right at the end. And I gotta find out what happens. Except for this. You. Oh, this is where she gets a bit darker. I'm feeling really festive right now. <laughs> this is the closest way we got to a, a Stephen King Christmas movie. <laughs> Zelda says the book's just as good as the film. Awesome. God, I love you. Yeah. Naked lunch. Which I've never, ever seen. When I started writing Naked Lunch, people offered their opinion. I do want to see Naked Lunch. It looks really interesting. Leo, funny thing is, whenever me and my parents see Kathy Bates and we struggle to remember her name, we just have the make a swinging gesture with a quick sound effect and we get it. Yeah, it's, that's a good way of remembering it. So it seems like this trailer is focusing more on the controversy of the book. Which is a good, it's a good route. It's a good route, route to date. Show the weird bits, yeah, yeah. Good trailer. Uh, Billy, Jummy Mystery was released on November the 30th, 1990. November is a month for Christmas movies. Ah, makes sense now. Thought you were finished with doing weird stuff. I thought I was too, but I guess I'm not. Yeah, I do want to see this film. Looks really strange. I like my strange. What's up next? Next the path is of the righteous man is beset Pulp Fiction. on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and fury. Well, it says it's funny when I hear of a title like called Naked Lunch, I imagine a twee sort of forties romantic comedy starring Audrey Hepburn. Oh god, did I get a shot? Out of here! Out of I can't. I, I just think of the Black Eyed Peas song when I hear that. <laughs> this is a classic trailer. This is this is iconic. This is how you do a trailer. The rhythm, the jukebox music, showing how how much of a big cast they've got. The, the Tarantino tone, it's it's all there. It's all there. There's also a re there's a really good Muppets parody of this as well, where they put Muppets faces onto all the cast members, except except for Eric Stoltz. Early uh, says can't beat the, this tune in the trailer. Billy, I think this was a recent trailer, not the original trailer. Yeah, it's really hard to find like '90s trailers on YouTube sometimes, <laughs> but still, that was a real, very good trailer, and um, I can imagine the '90s ones not do different. And this is 
Oh, Quest for Camelot. One of my biggest guild pleasure films. And magic. A time of bravery and adventure. Next summer, Warner Brothers Family Entertainment presents... Uh, Evan, do you hate lots of trailers as much as tra Jim Swarth does? I hate trailers I like. I don't like most trailers. <laughs> I've always loved trailers since I was a kid. I think trailers are fun. My, my only... The only thing that annoys me in trailers is when they show too much of the film and it's the film I want to see. That's it. That's my only annoyance, really. But, like, trailers in general are fun. I like, I like edit, editing trailers for my own work. Uh, but, yeah, this is, again, this is one of my nostalgic guilty pleasure films. Um, not a great film, but, like, it gives me the feels, gives me the memories. Leah, I may or not still have I Stand Alone and Looking For Your Eyes on my phone to this day. Yeah, those are good songs. Who will stop at nothing to destroy Listen, I love the part where Carrie Elways turns into an American so he can sing a pop rock ballad. Featuring songs by Academy Award winner Carol Bayer Sager and Grammy Who? winner David Foster. Who? Does anyone know those names? Does those names, names mean anything to anyone? <laughs> Share the adventure. Excalibur. It's almost like that. We can get Elton John and Tim Rice. <laughs> Uh, Leo, when I was a kid, the thing I was most obsessed with was the Griffin. I can't get over how magnificent his design is. It is a great design. Camelot. Quest for Camelot. When we get to Camelot, we'll be kissed by the world's most beautiful women. Right. We'll have to beat them off with a stick. Knights of the Round Table. <laughs> she does, Kayla does look a lot like Belle, doesn't she? Oh, Romeo plus Juliet. Now this is 90s as hell. <laughs> I think I grew up with this. I can't remember though. I think I probably saw it after it came out. Uh, because it, in my, on my English course at school, um, we had to... We did a, like a Shakespeare season, I think, or something. And we watched, watched a lot of Shakespeare adaptations. I think that's how I saw this film. Um, yeah. Leo, it's surreal to remember the prayer came from this film, considering how many opera singers cover it. Yeah. Listy, we watched this in English because we were too, all too thick to read the play. Oh, come on. <laughs> Leo, one of my favorite films. I know it is. It's why I put it in there, Leo. <laughs> um, yeah, we had a Shakespeare season at my school, and we did a performance of Twelfth Night. And I played two different characters for it. <laughs> Billy, Jemmy, the same director of this movie, also directed the recent Elvis movie. I know, uh, Baz Luhrmann. Zelda, I did Romeo and Juliet in my school. Ooh. We did Romeo and Juliet, but it was like a revisionist, a British, like a modern British re revision, this kind of story, because like it was, what if Romeo and Juliet were chavs and goths? I'm not kidding. <laughs> it was weird, it was weird. I remember there was like a scene where they had like a fight between the Chavs and Goffs to I predict a riot. <laughs> it was, we were a weird school. It was a weird ass school. <laughs> Billy, this shows what, of what Romeo and Juliet could work in modern times. Uh, Cause I prefer the Franco uh, Zeffirelli version. Romeo and Juliet is a bit more professional and traditional. I get you. Late, I never saw this movie. I think I was put off by how modern it was. Leo, everyone in class, crushing hard on DiCaprio's Romeo. Me, Lucas Mo as uh, Tybalt, I know. <laughs> now, this is a film I'm very nostalgic for. Uh, but I caught. The only, the only reason I saw it is because uh, Cartoon Network screened it. The Cartoon Network used to have like, these movie nights. And they screened Robert, Robert Dangerfield quite a lot. So that's the main reason I know it. Um, but then when I got older and I discovered the work of Rodney Dangerfield, I, was, I started with, wait, it's kind of weird, he made a film where he's a dog and the dog's model on him? <laughs> it is kind of weird, when, once you know Rodney's work, it's a little weird. I do love Rodney's stand-up comedy, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of Rodney's comedy. But I don't remember if this, I've not seen this film in ages, I don't know how well the comedy in this holds up. I know Rodney had a hand in the writing. 
Blue Red Riding Hood. And he's a uh, Leo, I love seeing obscure animated films as a kid, especially ones that aired on Cartoon Network. Yeah, yeah. That's how I saw a lot of films. Uh, Listing, I had to watch this a few times, but this is to my nephew. So, oh, no respect, no respect at all. So this is the, Billy says they loved Rodney and Caddyshack. I've not seen Caddyshack. Uh, Leo, it's also weird to know that Harold Ramis was involved in this film. Yes, he was, he was, yeah. He's Rover Dangerfield, the dog who gets no respect. No respect at all. It's just weird that it existed. <laughs> it's just so strange that it existed. When you're a kid, you don't you don't really think about it because like you're too young for Ronnie Dangerfield. But then when you do see his work, you're like, oh. <laughs> uh, so to imagine if George Carlin well, made an animated kids film, trouble. Thomas the Tank Engine doesn't count. He did Tarzan too. Danger, What's this? Upon one man. Uh, but when he's busy, oh, he calls five girls. Spice World. <laughs> okay, never seen this film, but I was a massive, huge Spice Girls fan as a kid. I was obsessed with Spice Girls. Like, Spice Fever happened when I was the target audience for this band. I heard this film's really, really, really weird, though, and, like, makes no sense. Uh, Leah, when I was a kid, I thought the main character was blind because of his eyes, but it was something they didn't feel a need to point it out. I thought it was good, it was cool to see them have them not it's just not pointed out. Of course, I know it's not the case, but I love the thought of it at that time. Oh, you mean a uh, rope of danger field? Compassion. It's really too hot in here. I need. Uh, Leah, so it's safe to say I did not see this trailer turning into Spice World. I think the only thing that would put me off this film would be the Spice Girls acting. <laughs> I can't remember if any of them can actually act. It's so weird Roger, Roger, Roger Moore is in this movie. I think Alan Cummings in it as well. No, no, it's um, Ricky Grant. Misty, I was in my grunge face by the time this came out. Dodged a bullet there. Yeah, you were a bit older than me at this point. I like the blonde one. No, 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 no. Uh, so, I've seen weird, I've seen Sing Double. I know I've seen Double, that's a weird ass film as well. Spice up your life with the Spice Girls. Spice World. I do want to see it. I might want to, I might do a drinking game. Girl power, feminism, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna need a drink while watching this. <laughs> uh, Zelda, my mum wanted me to watch it. It's not really my cup of tea, but I would love to give it a try. It looks like it, if you were with a bunch of like millennial friends and you grabbed a drink, it'd be kind of fun. It's a nice party film, maybe. Stuart Little. Attention, everybody. This is Stuart. Hello. This is nostalgic to me, but I don't Anna? remember much about it. They introduced him into their world. Well, it's just about everybody, except for... Snowbell! Rock him right now! Spit him right out! We do not eat family members. They welcomed him into their lives. It's so funny when I've, I've told American friends, you Laurie is British. Because, <laughs> like, everyone knows you Laurie for his American accents. Remember, I remember, like, blowing Viva's mind when I said, that, look, the guy that plays House is British. She was like, what? No, he's American. Leo, it's weird we wouldn't not get films like Stuart Little today. Yeah. It was co-written by M. Night Shyamalan, by the way. Something's yeah. missing. I feel an empty space inside me, and I just want to know what was. So, it? Zizzy, you hit me in the stars, yeah? Oh, let's see. I just read the book of this. It's so Not weird. Me. You can tell it's the first book for E.B. White. Leo, I watched Blackadder so much as a kid, yet I never recognized him here. Yeah, because he's so he's so American in this. Columbia Pictures presents. Giving away quite a lot. And that's a big plot point. Who's ever had trouble fitting in? Not, really sure. not sure how I feel about CGI. Not the CGI really. with this, though. I guess I can always use. Not sure. Finding their way, Stuart Little gets scratched tonight. Uh, Nick, looking back at the part where he gets trapped in the washing machine, I'm actually starting to think that it was a rather disturbing scene. Again, I've not seen this film in ages. From the co-director of the Lion Yes. <laughs> it is. Uh, Rob Minkoff.
So he thinks the CGI looks good for the time? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, for the time, it's it's good. It's not it's not distractingly bad, but it's also not great either. It's just kind of like, yeah, it'll do. I remember enjoying the sequel a lot more. I remember enjoying the sequel more. Watch the sequel more. It's because it's weird they're playing a Super Trump song in this. This is People once believed that when someone dies, the crow. The crow carries their soul Love the crow growing up. To this is nostalgic to me. But sometimes I remember seeing the crow for the first time being like the crow could bring that soul back. I was already a massive Bruce Lee fan and then discovered Brandon Lee and I was like, oh, your son's just as awesome. Uh, so Leo says this about Stuart Little. Something fun and I found out about this film is that uh, it, 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 is there an expensive missing painting turned up in the living room of the little house? An art collector saw the film with his kid and was so shocked to see it, and his suspicions turned out to be right as he was a real priceless missing painting. Wow. Leo says the, the Strilo 2 is better. Soda, this movie was one of my the few live action films I enjoyed as a kid. Billy, ooh, the movie Brandon Lee, and Lee was killed in. Yes. Sadly, yeah. Uh, Nick, I haven't seen this movie, but I have seen the game based on the movie. It was an accident. It was an accidental death, as far as I know, but it was... It was an accident, but it was also a level, level of unprofessionalism involved, I think. I can't remember the full story. Listy, such a shame he died. This film birthed uh, a lot of goths. Yeah, I, I do wish that... This could have been... This was technically his breakthrough film before he died. Could have done so much more after this. Zelda, have you seen The Borrowers? I have. The future's toughest cop is oh, Theodore Rex. So I've, I've not grown up with this. Not grown up with it whatsoever. Uh, Leo, dark as I thought the crow is, I do wonder what would have happened if Brandon had a son, because if the supposed curse repeated the third time, it would have been scary. Yeah, I get you. Another film where I'm like, how does this exist? Whoopi Goldberg teams up with a, with a dinosaur puppet and solves crime in the future or something. Yeah, I, I didn't grow up as a kid and I've never seen it. I've seen loads of reviews of it there. The puppetry is alright. <laughs> Leo, <laughs> Theodore Rex, I'll never still never go out, get over how Whoopi tried so hard to get out of this film. I don't blame her. It's a puppetry. They're all animatronic puppets. Introducing Leo, every time I see Theodore, I can practically smell the cheap rubber. A customer. Uh, let's see another film I rented as a kid. One tried to weaken. Good thing we always got two at a time. Evan, will this movie be become a public panic episode? Maybe one day, but you gotta remember I only do one episode a month, so if I ever do do it, it'll be probably in a few years' time. But it does count as a public panic, yep. Billy, Jam, I remember seeing this trailer on the Team and T nineteen ninety DVD. Right, what's what's next? Ooh, sounds familiar. Oh, it's toys. Barry Levinson, the Academy Award winning director of Rain Man. The really weird Robin Williams film, which is saying a lot because Robin made a lot of weird films Robin these days. Williams, the star of Dead Poets Society. I'm in the mood for smoked chicken, how about you? Comes the story of a man who makes jokes. I'm Leslie Zebra. <laughs> I like it. I like Robin's hairstyle in this. I like you. Suits him. Well, I like you too. <laughs> I think love is wonderful. And makes toys. I uh, listen. Quite like this film at the time. Not sure if it w I still would. Woolsey. I heard it's not very good. I heard it's very strange. That's supposed to go in your ear. Oh. And a man who makes war. Uh, Billy, I know this movie had a SNES game. I don't understand. So do I miss this man so much. I think we all do. We all miss him. General 
Uh, Leo, never saw this film, but I always now, get a fe the feeling it, it was disjointed. Enough. It does seem disjointed. Enough. It seems like a, a lot of tones are happening right now. Billy, Robin was such a good actor performer. He really, 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 really was. A most unlikely hero in the most unlikely battle that ever saved the world. Ah! 20th Century Fox presents an extraordinary motion. Oh shit, that's Michael Gambon. It is. Yep. In a Barry Levinson film. Hello, Space Kidder. We're just the 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 stream's just about to end soon. <laughs> Curse, the film Robin wanted to do well after doing Aladdin because he didn't want to be the celebrity of that film. One more trailer. What's this one? I can't remember. Oh, the Rugrats movie! Yeah, this is nostalgic for me. I didn't see it in cinemas, but I definitely saw it on TV. Uh, Leo, why does this movie give me the similar vibes as Baby Geniuses? Yeah, uh, Leo was referring to uh, toys. I get what you mean. Uh, Space Kid says, I'm always late. So I stream 8pm uh, on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, UK time. Is this is what I said! The Beetlejuice theme! In the 90s, the Beetlejuice theme was like in nearly every trailer. What's he doing in the Rugrats movie? It does not fit! What the? This is big action news saying, do you know where your children are? It's not really a whimsical film. <laughs> so straight. Okay, it fits there. It's fitting in the dark scenes, but. This is a weird use of the Beetlejuice theme. Tim Curry. Join Tommy, Chucky, Phil, and Lil, Angelica, and introducing. This is one of my guilt pleasure films. Baby Dill. Yes, this is the film that introduced Dill. Yeah, Tim Curry is in all three Rugrats movies. Your only daughter. Did it? What? That was pretty good. Expect adventure. Let's see, Tommy Pickles is Beetlejuice. <laughs> the origin story of Beetlejuice. Leo, I never saw the film, but my friend Risa showed me the scene where Tommy loses it and almost kills his little brother, and I was like, Jesus, yeah, it's a very dark scene. Uh, so, though, can we all agree that Reptile Wagon looks so awesome? Yeah, Reptile Wagon's sick, and he's voiced by Buster Rhymes as well. <laughs> Billy, is Tim Curry in all three? Yes. In the first film, he's a reporter. In the second film, he's a sumo wrestler. In the third film, he is Nigel Thornberry. So yeah, Tim is in all three films. So the music reminded me of the trailer for Magic Railway. So yeah, those are all the trailers we'll be looking at. Which was your favourite trailer? Let me know what your which is your favourite trailer out of all of those. I'm not... Can't really decide on mine. There were so many, it was hard to really narrow down the one that stood out the most to me. I, there weren't, there weren't even any trailers where I thought like, "Oh, this is bad. This is a badly made trailer." Most of them, regardless of the quality of the films they were advertising, I thought like, "Yeah, they're doing a good job." I think maybe the, I mean, the only one I didn't like was the Stuart Little one because it gave away a major plot point. Uh, <laughs> the Batman Robin trailer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna agree. I love the Batman Robin trailer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a it's like a highlight of all, all the silliest moments. Uh, da, 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 da. Listy, if you're gonna if you got Tim Curry on your payroll, you're damn well gonna use him. Yeah, I don't blame Klasky Klasky Chopo for using him again and again and again. Uh, so the Damon nostalgia is high right now. Fantastic, that's what I wanted. Uh, Leah, how does it feel to know your brother lost your only daughter, then just sitting back and watching the fireworks? Uh, so the trailers hold up well. They really do. There is there is a charm to the 90s trailers that I feel like is kind of missing from today's trailers. Like I've got nothing particularly against today's trailers, but I feel like 90s trailers had a bit more energy and a bit more presentation to them. Nowadays, it's like, look how serious and big our films are. Back then, it was like, look how fun our films are. <laughs> um, but, 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 but. Leo, I got such a buzz watching these. Brilliant. Uh, Curse, The Crow is my favourite trailer. Yeah, it is a really good trailer, yeah. 
uh, late. The Toys trailer kind of made me want to see it. Same, to be honest, even though I've had bad things after seeing the trailer, I'm like, wow, there's some visuals here that are really interesting, and Toys kind of seems like a film I would make myself. And I feel like, I feel like you might agree with that. Like, doesn't Toys look like a film I would make? <laughs> uh, da -da -da, Space Kiddo, I only really watch animation movies. No worries. Billy, <laughs> Billy says the Coneheads trailer stood out. It definitely made me realize that I don't want to see Coneheads. Because <laughs> I just can't imagine those alien voices uh, lasting a whole film. Uh, Listy, I already forgotten every trailer I saw. Thanks, Brain. <laughs> No, it's we're getting older, Listy. We don't remember things we're doing half the time. We're gold. We're at the goldfish years. Uh, Leo, you hit the nail ahead there. Look how fun our films are. Yeah, all those trailers, even the bad ones. I was like, I want to see this, and like I know they're bad, and it's it's just the the energy of them, the the enthusiasm behind those all these trailers. Like you don't get that anymore. Every nearly every trailer nowadays the. They're kind of pretentious, if I'm honest, and they're, they're, they're just trying too hard to... I don't know. Yeah, they're a little hollow. They're a little hollow. I've seen some good trailers now and again, but like the good trailers for nowadays, I, I miss 90s trailers. 90s trailers are fun, and, like, I think it's been a while as well since I've gone to the cinema and been like, oh, trailers are before this. I remember when I was a kid, I was like, trailers are before this! Ah! Because 90s trailers were fun. Um... Billy, can we do a watch party party on Coneheads? Everyone really wants me to see Coneheads. Is it because you just want to see me get annoyed by the alien voices? <laughs> I might do if if people want to see me do it, but I, it might get old very fast. Space Kiddo, it's because they care more about the money than entertainment anymore. Well, they, they, no, they've always the studios may studios have always cared more about money than entertainment. <laughs> That's always been a thing since since like the early days of cinema. It's always been a a profit venture. Uh, where am I in chat? Uh, so, the Bam and Robin did one thing. It said it was going off the rails. Yeah, the Bam and Robin trailer again. It, it didn't mislead. You you knew what you were in for. It didn't it didn't try to project itself as like oh we're the next we're the next dark Batman movie. It was like no we're, we're kind of silly. <laughs> I respect that. Leo trailers just do not capture interest. How many have you seen are grouchy? Face explosion, car drifting, dramatic face explosion. Name forgotten instantly. Yeah, I know what you mean. All these trailers had a lot of personality to them, and like you d really got an impression of what the tone was, what this, what the story was. You don't really get an impression of the story of a lot of films nowadays. Like that, you don't really get. It's more about like look at the spectacle, and if if they do want to focus on advertising the story, they, they just give away nearly every spoiler they can. Uh, Soda, 90s trailers, uh, fun modern trailers. Foghorns, <laughs> okay. Mm. Uh, before I go, what is your favorite, is, is, okay, is there a trailer, is there a 90s movie trailer I didn't show that you like and that you think deserves some attention or praise? Let, let me know, let me know. I'd like, I'm kind of curious to see others. If I'm honest, I'd like to, I'd like to rewatch a, a lot of old trailers or trailers of uh, old films that I never even seen. I just want to see the trailer. I re I really like trailers. <laughs> when they're done right, they could, there's there's something really fun about trailers. The way they're edited, the way they're presented. Uh, Kirst, I know people are dunking on modern trailers, but uh, it can be done well. Like, have you seen the teaser trailer for Blade Runner 2049? Yeah, I'm not saying all modern trailers are bad. I'm just saying they're. If you compare them to the 90s, there's, there's a dramatic difference, and I prefer the 90s. I prefer what the 90s were going for. And if I'm honest, I can't really... The, we watched 24 trailers there, and I all, I all thought they were great trailers. Um, if you played me about... Tw if you played me all the trailers for all the films that are coming out soon right now, I think maybe one or two would, like, stick out to me. I think that's what I want to get across. Uh, so did the Toy Story trailer. I remember the Toy Story trailer being good, yeah. Listy, Lion King still, although technically it's just the opening scene, which all, that's all they needed. That's all they needed to. Kind of, that's all they really needed, and even the remake needed that. <laughs> just show the opening, and people were like, "I need to see this now." <laughs> Sometimes a, te a little teaser like that can be enough. Uh, Leo, not a 90s trailer, but to prove my point further, there's this two and a half 
mini trailer for the Andrew Garfield film called uh, Mainstream. I dare anyone to watch that trailer and explain to me what the story is supposed to be. Yeah, there's so many trailers like that nowadays where it's like, why should I see this? It, it, a lot of trailers are like showing off like, look at the film quality, look at... Look at look at the stars we have in it. Look 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 how pretty it is. And I'm, and I'm like, okay, but why should I see it? Why should I care? But like '90s trailers, I can play pretty much like any average and be like, oh, I get what this is. It's I, I think what I'm trying to say is like it's it's almost like it's almost like fun trailers. Fun trailers are a dying art form. This the kind of fun that the '90s did. Uh, Leo, this. This makes me want to go back and remember the different trails I saw on VHS growing up. So many still embodied in my memory. Yeah, that's the thing is that a lot of 90s and even like early 2000s trailers, they stick with you. They really do stick with you. They're almost like their own short films. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Soda, maybe one day we should do 90s cartoon intros. Maybe, maybe. It could be interesting. Uh, Space Cadet, I've just watched the old one, but I didn't like it. Uh, Listy, actually, if I recall, as terrible as the first Pokemon is, the trailer really sold it. I had the Pokemon trailer. I don't know why it's not on there. I swear I actually was going to have the Pokemon trailer. And you know what? Seeing as I've actually got it on, on my PC, uh, I'm going to try and put it up. Because, yeah, it's it's a damn good trailer. Say what you want about um, four kids. Oh, why is it not working? Whoa, 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 whoa. What is going on? Yeah, say what you want about Four Kids as a company, but, like, they were really good at, um... Really good at marketing and promoting their, like, Pokemon. They were really damn good at it. Uh, where is it? Flip me sideways. Hang on. Yeah, that makes sense. It's not on here. I don't know why it's not on here. <laughs> I'm gonna find it, because it's, it's a very good trailer. It's a very good trailer. Uh, yeah, it turns out I've not downloaded it. That is weird. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, come on. Come on, YouTube. Bring it up. I'm going to get hold of it. And we're gonna watch the Pokemon tra the Pokemon movie trailer before we uh, head out. I think this is the one. Yeah, this is it. Just don't play, don't play. Oh my god, on. Don't play yet. I'm gonna download you. Bear with me, folks. I'm sorry this is taking a while, but like this is a trailer I did want. I did want to. I had this in the lineup already, and I don't know why it didn't appear. Uh, but like the Pokemon, the, the the first the Pokemon theatrical movie trailers, they're really cool. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, bear with me. I'm really sorry this is taking a while. Uh, let's go back to chat quickly. Uh, Pokemon, ma, ma, ma. Yeah, yeah, Soda, yeah. Uh, Soda, honestly, Pokemon was the only four kids to buy like. Uh, hi there, Cameron. We've ju we've almost finished. Uh, Space Cadet, how come they changed it? Changed what, sorry? Uh, as part of the first Pokemon thing I ever watched was the Mewtwo's TV special that acted like a sequel to the movie. Uh, okay, so I should be able. To, it should be up by now. I should have. Yeah. Okay, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. So this is the trailer for the Pokemon, the first Pokemon movie. Welcome. It's so damn epic. To the stadium. Uh, Cameron, did you see any Pokemon movies in cinema? Yes, I saw all all three of the first the films that came out in cinema. Showdown. You can't remember. I, I grew up when Pokemon was like 
everything. Like, I was I was around during the big Pokemon craze. So like, and back then, Pokemon movie, when when a Pokemon movie came in cinemas, it was like one of the biggest things in the playground. Bring all your skill. But yeah, this trailer, this trailer's sick. How good is this trailer? Courage. Like, I don't even like this movie, and I'm like, this is a damn good trailer. <laughs> is here. It helps that the four kids, uh, the, 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 well, it helps that the music score is, like, awesome. So did my first anime film. I think it was the first anime film for a lot of millennials. Uh, camera, I love the voice for the trailer. Yeah, the trailer, the trailer voices for the Pokemon films are sick. Pokemon, man, 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 Pokemon, man, man. <laughs> Kids, WB Kids WB presents, presents Pokemon, the first movie. Catch it. I also really like the Pokemon 2000 trailer. Yeah, the first, the first three Pokemon movies had. A, yeah, they got Don LaFontaine for the for the theatrical trailers. Like, again, four kids knew what they're doing as market promoters. Like, they weren't the best dubbing studio, but like, as as a company that knew they had Pokemon on their hands, they knew, they they knew how to spend the money on on promotion. <laughs> right, I'm gonna head off, folks. Uh, I'm gonna be trying to carry on with uh, the Film Tums podcast on the Star Wars prequels. The podcast itself should be up either Wednesday or Thursday, depending on how things go. Um, next stream, Wednesday, is going to be the Jim Henson quiz. I'm hosting a live quiz on Jim Henson and his movies. So, so like the films he made and Jim Henson as a person. Um, and then Friday for Relax Club, I'm going to be hosting a bowling stream. Yes, I'm going to be playing a bowling game. Uh, Listy, the first movie, and not a lot, not like uh, Dizzy's Dog. Uh, so did my inner child is in hype mode. Ah, oh, brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. Right, yeah, I'll be off. Hope you're happy. Hope you're smiling. Hope you have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever time it is for you. And.